Cephachlor, trade name Cchlor. Okay, when we hear these Ceph prefixes, we automatically need to be thinking anti-infectives, okay? Or Cephalosporins, okay? So Cephachlor is is a second generation Cephalosporin, okay? Therapeutic class, anti-infective, pharmacologic class, Cephalosporin second generation. We give Cephachlor for treatment of respiratory tract infections, skin infections, and otitis media. So it has a pretty wide spectrum, but yeah, we, we, it will often be given for these respiratory tract infections, skin infections, or otitis media. Its action is that it's bactericidal, okay? What it does is it binds to the bacterial cell wall and leads to the cell death of the bacteria, which then obviously treats our infection. Nursing considerations are that we need to understand with these cephalosporins that they are contraindicated with any sort of cephalosporin allergy, of course, and possibly penicillin, penicillin allergy. So what will happen a lot of times before we give these cephalosporins is we'll ask our patient, have you ever had a reaction to a cephalosporin or penicillin? Because a lot of the times these patients with penicillin, penicillin allergies can develop allergies to cephalosporins. It can also lead to seizures, pseudomembranous colitis, or which is the inflammation of the bowel as a result of C. diff, diarrhea, phlebitis at the IV site, and anaphylaxis. So our patients who are getting this, uh, these um, antibiotics and things, we really need to be looking at the IV site because it's, it, they can really quickly lead to phlebitis, okay? So we want to be monitoring our IV sites, especially if we have it covered. We want to be able to look at it every shift or every few hours and make sure that we're not developing this uh, phlebitis. It can also lead to anaphylaxis, so we want to be monitoring uh, for any sort of skin reactions or anything like that. We want to be assessing our infection and our allergies, of course, as we said, but assess the infection. Uh, we'll draw our our, our, um, our WBCs daily, see if the infection's improving, uh, look in the ears, monitor the skin, or uh, chest x-rays, things like that to see if our infection is improving. We want to obtain cultures prior to therapy. The reason we do this is because if we give uh, our antibiotic prior to checking cultures, then we might start treating this infection before we even see what it is exactly or how it's actually working. So once we determine that the patient may be um, may have some sort of infection, we want to draw blood cultures, and then that will help us identify exactly what's going on prior to starting them on the cephalosporin, okay? We're going to want to monitor bowel function. Like we said, this can lead to pseudomembranous colitis, C. diff, and we want to monitor for any sort of super infection. So if we give this, this medication, it's not taken as it should, or the bacteria is ex incredibly strong or resistant, then it can actually lead to super infection, which means that we become resistant to the cephalosporins, okay? And the, the bacteria actually becomes stronger than the cephalosporin and continues to uh, propagate and everything. So what we really need to keep in mind, biggest things with cephalosporins are they're going to have the ceph prefix, uh, and we want to monitor for any sort of uh, penicillin allergies. Um, anaphylaxis, phlebitis are big things to keep in mind. And um, making sure the patient takes it as uh, suggested and as prescribed, okay? So those are our cephalosporins, and that is cephachlor. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by Nursing.com. To get your free copy of the 140 Must Know Meds textbook, head over to nursing.com slash 140 meds that's nursing.com slash 140 meds when you head over there you get a free copy of this book all you have to do is pay for shipping we love you guys now go out and be your best self today happy nursing